Hi, I'm Adam Culp and you're at BeachCast. Thank you for stopping by. In this video, I'm going to share some vital tips for learning a new code base quickly for more productivity. So stick around and we'll get right on that. Welcome back. As I said before, I'm going to share some tips for working with a new code base and learning it very quickly. So that way you can be more productivity in your new job or maybe in a project that you're working on, whatever the case might be. We've all been there. We've gotten a new job faced with a new code base that in some cases might be very large. And how do we get up and working really quickly so that way we're productive to the rest of the team? In the past, I created another video on some tips of how to read code created by others. I'll make sure to link to that uh, up above here. So check that out and uh, you can use some of those tips in conjunction with these ones that I'm sharing to help you get up and working faster in a code base. I'd encourage you to check that out as well as this video. One of the ways that I've found to become productive really quickly is to take on some small tasks. I just finished setting up my development environment, got everything working, but I don't really know the code that well. However, I can click around in the application if it's a web-based application. And then uh, based on what I'm able to see, I can make small changes to the code and then refresh in a browser and be able to see the results of those changes. So it's very easy to make some small changes and take on some tickets for some small bugs, things like that. Be very careful and avoid taking on projects that are too large right off the get go, because generally it's going to take longer for you as a new developer on the project to work on something larger, simply because you just don't know the code base well enough to know where to find things. We as developers spend more time reading code than we do creating new code. So it just makes sense to try to optimize that as much as we can. By taking on small tasks, we ensure that we're going to have a lot more time to, to read the code as we're adding new functionality and being able to acclimate our way around. Rather than taking on tickets for, for each small task, maybe shadow another developer for a little while. And through shadowing that other developer, do some of the small tasks for them as they're working on larger projects. By doing this, not only do you gain an instant mentor because you're working with somebody through the process, but you're also just taking on small tasks. You're being very productive. We're able to take advantage of some pair programming as we go. So again, the first thing that I like to do when tackling a new code base is by taking on some small little tasks that help me get acclimated in the code much more quickly. The next thing that I would recommend, which I've already kind of said is get a mentor, find somebody who can help you with the code base. There are other developers who may have been working at the company much longer. And if they've been working there for a while, chances are they're already familiar with the application. They're familiar with the code. They know some of the best practices for a given team as far as including more code, where to find certain libraries, where to find certain services that you might be using as you're developing some small task. So a mentor can be priceless. That being said, don't limit yourself to just one. There is not going to be one mentor that knows everything about the application or everything about the stack. So embrace more mentors. Don't be, don't be shy. Reach out and ask questions. Find as many mentors as you can along the way that will help solve your hurdles. So a mentor is going to be really important to help you get up and running very quickly. One of the things that you might want to look into after you've found a mentor is ask for a walkthrough of the code. Ask if that person is willing to spend a little bit of time, maybe clicking through the application and sharing some of the things that they know. You'll be amazed at how much tribal knowledge you find that isn't in the documentation or isn't on a wiki somewhere. And by having a mentor that you can reach out to and having them give you a walkthrough of the application, you'll learn a lot more than you will by spending hours reading through documentation. As you do this, though, be aware that the most senior developer is not necessarily the best person to give you a walkthrough. Uh, sometimes it's the lower level developers who have a lot more fresh knowledge of the application, who I find are the best resources to have 
give me a walkthrough of the application or a walkthrough of certain functionality within the application. Senior developers are busy managing, architecting, creating designs, things like that. They may not know the state of the current application when it comes down to the raw code. Along with getting a walkthrough of the application, though, is also the documentation. Uh, as I said, the documentation might not be the best starting point. However, get familiar with the documentation of the project. Get familiar with the wikis or whatever other resources the team has been using to document their processes, their thoughts, the application logic, if you will. And, and know where that is and find that. So the documentation is another key thing to help you getting working on an application code base very quickly. Many teams also have a convention of doing code reviews. Code reviews are immensely useful for a new person in a code base. Not only receiving code reviews, but also giving code reviews. After somebody has finished adding some sort of functionality, it's very helpful to go through and do a code review as a new person. It helps you learn a little bit more of where certain things are happening within an application while you're providing value through doing code reviews. A lot of companies are using applications and tools to do some of these code reviews. Things like maybe GitHub or Bitbucket or GitLab or maybe something else that facilitates doing the code review, keeping track of the back and forth communication that comes with code reviewing. And that can be very priceless as far as helping somebody get up and working very quickly, as I said. So take the time to learn the code review process. And if the company doesn't implement code reviews, it doesn't mean you can't do it. You can still reach out to fellow developers and ask them, hey, can you please do a code review on my code? Or can I do a code review of your code? You can learn a lot through code reviewing. As you do a lot of these things, finding a mentor, doing small tasks, asking for an application walkthrough, getting familiar with the documentation and wikis, and also doing code reviews, it's very easy to get caught in the trap of spending too much time doing things. So I encourage everybody to also have a uh, no progress rule. And what I mean by that is if you find that you're doing something for a prolonged time period, sometimes it's easier just to stop and take on another task or even pass the task on to somebody else if you're not making any progress. I generally set a rule for myself of a certain time period. If I spend X amount of minutes on something, then chances are I'm not going to get really good progress out of it. So for instance, if I spend maybe maybe a half an hour, maybe an hour, maybe even only 15 minutes. If I'm spending a significant amount of time and I've not met any forward progression, then it's time to you know, throw up my hands and say, okay, I'm, I'm done. I, I, I can't continue doing this. Otherwise, I'm just using up cycles and not, not being productive. Uh, so I set a rule, a, a no progress rule for myself to say, okay, after an hour, if I'm not making any progress on this, it's time for me just to step away. Maybe I'll go grab a coffee. Maybe I'll work on another task. Or perhaps maybe I'll reach out to a teammate and say, hey, I'm just not making any progress on this. Can you look over my shoulder? I'll walk you through what I was doing and maybe maybe it'll, it'll help me get past this hurdle. So having a no progress rule can really help you stay productive and ensure that you stay on track. So here I've shared six vital tips on how I get up and working on a code base quickly and become productive very fast. I hope you found this video helpful. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing so that way you'll be notified the next time I create a new video. I look forward to hearing from you if you have any questions. If you have some tips that maybe I didn't share here that have really helped you, Leave a comment down below and tell me about that so others can read your tip as, as well in the comments. I encourage that and, and really appreciate any, any insight that you can give. Maybe I can include it in the things that I do on a daily basis. Now, YouTube is going to put some videos up here that you may find helpful. I encourage you to click on those and watch them, check them out. Hopefully you find something there to improve your skills as well. Be good to yourself and others and I'll see you next time.